Hi, in this video I'm going to show you a smart contract in the Ethereum platform written in Solidity. I will leave a link in the description of the video to Remix, a very popular development environment for Solidity that I will be using in this video. I will also leave a link to the code so that you can read it later. You can create a new file in Remix, like this. And you can copy paste the code to see exactly what you see in this video. Let's first minimize this to have more space. Okay, so before we look into the code, let me explain what the purpose of the contract is, how it works, and the flow to get it running and start using it. You will see that smart contract is just a fancy expression for a piece of code. This contract will lock Ether for one year to help the owner with a savings habit. To achieve this, the contract needs to store the address of the person who created it and the moment in time when the contract was created. After we write the code, we compile it. This process takes code in Solidity, a language that is easy for humans to understand, and turns it into a language that the Ethereum virtual machine can understand and run. And then we deploy the code to the blockchain. Once the contract is deployed, this is once the contract is in the blockchain, the owner of the contract can send Ether from their account to the contract. This Ether will be stored in the contract's account and can only be withdrawn after one year has passed since the contract was created. There are two functionalities in this contract, storing more Ether into the contract's account and withdrawing that Ether. The owner needs to specify in their transaction which functionality they want to use. This is withdrawing or depositing. And if they want to deposit, also they have to specify how much Ether they want to deposit. It is worth mentioning at this point that once the contract is deployed to the blockchain, it just sits there. It is not running all the time. The contract needs to be called by a user via a transaction. The compilation and deployment process, as well as the interaction with the contract, this locking up some ether and trying to withdraw it, this will be the topic of an upcoming video. Here we will go through the code and demonstrate what a smart contract looks like. And now let's dive into the code. The first thing we do is to define the version of Solidity that we want to use. In line 9, we start writing the contract. If you have done some object-oriented programming before, this may remind you of a class definition. The owner variable stores the address that is going to receive the ether after one year has passed. The variable called start time records the time at which the contract was created. In line 15, we have this function, which is a constructor. This is common to other object-oriented programming languages. This function is called only once when the contract is created, and it is used to initialize the variable owner and the variable timestamp. In other words, when we create the contract, we know the owner and the timestamp, and we use the constructor, like this, to store this information forever, so that we can retrieve it whenever we need it. Next, we have a function whose name is receive. You can see here the words external and payable. These are keywords, which means they have a special meaning in Solidity and they cannot be used outside of this context. For example, you cannot have a function or a variable called external or payable. External means that the function will be called from outside the contract. Payable means that the user can call this function to transfer Ether to the contract account. Because this function is external and payable, this contract can receive Ether, which is exactly what we wanted to do. Finally, we have this function in line 23 called withdraw. This is a function that needs to be called in order to extract the funds from the account of the contract and send them back to the account of the person who created the contract. This function has a public modifier. It is similar to the external modifier that we have just seen. It makes this function available outside of the contract. There are differences in performance and use cases, uh, but they are out of the scope of this video. In line 26, we have this require function, which is going to check if one year has already passed. If it has not, then the execution of the contract will stop with this error message, one year has not passed, and the gas that has not been consumed will be given back to the account who called the contract. Prior to this version, you could directly use the years unit here and say something like one year, but that has been deprecated, which means it cannot be used anymore in new versions of Solidity. Instead, we need to express one year in seconds, which is what we have here and here in the comment. If this check passes, then in line 28, 
we can use the transfer function to send the ether that is stored in the contract's account to the account of the person who created the contract. And we can easily do this because we stored that address in the owner variable. And this is basically it. As you have seen in pretty much 30 lines of code, including white spaces and comments, we have created a very powerful smart contract. If you have enjoyed this video, leave a comment, click like and subscribe because you don't want to miss the next videos to learn more about Ethereum and cryptocurrencies. See you in the next video. This video is part of a free comprehensive course on cryptocurrencies that we have put together at teachyourselfcrypto.com. Check it out to learn more about Bitcoin, Ethereum, smart contracts, decentralized finance, and much more. The link is in the description of this video.